OBS 28 is out, which is super exciting. There's a ton of new stuff in OBS 28. It's been talked about as one of the biggest updates to OBS ever, and I don't know if that's entirely true. It is a big update, but to me, the biggest one that's happened in my lifetime on streaming is when they added the new NVENC encoder. That was a game changer for stream quality. I've found six core features that are either gonna change my experience every single time I use it, or potentially yours, what I think are the six most important ones. And just as a spoiler, I'm not going to include the aesthetic overview, which I love. I love the high resolution text. I love the new colors. It finally looks like modern software, which is great for OBS. It very much needed it, but I'm not going to mention that. That's not one of the six. We got six others for you. So let's jump into it. Hey, the sponsor of today's video really wants you to know that the Stream Deck is actually compatible with the new OBS version 28. You just have to update it. So I will link the downloads and the instructions down below. It takes like 30 seconds. It's pretty easy. Yeah, so the Stream Deck is actually the sponsor of this video and it's kind of a hard ad to do because everybody knows what it is. It's literally the most popular streaming tool that exists. But in case you don't understand why, let me tell you. You can change scenes, play an instant replay, clip a moment for TikTok, play funny sound bites, protect yourself from hate raids. Basically, you can completely control OBS in your stream. But for those of you asking what about non-streaming related tools, and for some reason thinking I can hear you through your computer screen, you can set up hotkeys for Photoshop or video editing and make it your creative control center. You can adjust your lights. You can control your Zoom calls. We're just scratching the tip of the iceberg here. Just look at the plugin store they have available. I'm really just trying to make the point that you can literally do anything on this thing. Plus with multiple size stream decks and the ability to use more than one at a time, the abilities are mathematically endless. Oh, also you can change your faceplate, so have fun with that one. If you don't have a stream deck and you'd like to start making your streaming easier, or maybe you already have one and you want to expand your captain's chair, link in the description below. All right, let's start with number one. But before we do that, if you don't mind going down, hit the like button and maybe leaving a comment on your experience with OBS 28. If you haven't used it yet or you don't have any comments, just leave your favorite emoji because it's engagement and it helps out the video and I would really appreciate it. Feature number one is one that I think a lot of you are gonna use or should use, by the way. It's a big deal. It's application, dang it, what's it called? My screen's just turned on because I had to check the name of it and then I forgot the name of it. Application audio capture. You can now capture specific audio from a window that's open, an application that's running on your PC as a separate input. That is a big deal, especially for people that don't have uh, multi-channel software like the Beacon software or the Wavelink or GoXLR, one of those expensive audio interfaces, you can now do that separately native directly inside OBS. And this does two big things for you. First is the obvious one. It lets you adjust the volume and the settings of a specific input. Don't have to use voice meter anymore or any other software. You can just do it right inside OBS. But the second one solves a lot of problems for people. It is now easy for everyone to remove their music from their VODs. If you're not aware of this, you don't follow me on Twitter. I posted a whole thread about it. Twitch still uses audio recognition software called Audible Magic, which is why if you play copyright free music like Stream Beats, for example, you can still get your VODs muted. You won't get a DMCA strike because that's totally safe from DMCAs, but Twitch's audio system is just so outdated and old that it lets things slide and you get a mute when you shouldn't have. Before, it was really only possible to fix this using voice meter or using using something like Beacon that has a separate VOD track that you can send to Twitch. Now, built into OBS, you can capture, for example, Spotify as a second source, send it to Audio Track 2, separate from everything else, and inside the settings, select Audio Track 2 as the Twitch VOD track. This means that during your live stream, your audience will still hear both your music and everything else you got going on, like your microphone and your game sound, but your VOD will have the music removed. Meaning, one, there will be no mutes on your VOD, but two, if you want to download clips or full VODs for YouTube content, you can do it without the audio jump cutting and screwing up your entire video. I highly recommend all of you go set this up right now. However, super important, this doesn't mean you can use copyrighted music in your streams because you can still get live DMCA strikes. Make sure you're using safe music during your live streams, uh, like Stream Beats, for example. Over 1,500 tracks, 16 genres, plus we just released a collaboration with Foosley this weekend.
So go ahead and throw that on your stream playlist. We released both a version with vocals and an instrumental version in case you don't want vocals. So there you go. Use stream beats. Enjoy it. Number two, this one's kind of neat. NVIDIA Broadcast is now available directly inside of OBS. So while, for example, last year they added noise suppression to OBS version 27, now there is the NVIDIA version of that that allows you to remove super noisy sounds behind you or even remove room echo. This also means that you can add background removal directly as a filter inside OBS, not only to yourself, but to anyone. So if you're bringing a Discord call in there and you want to remove their background, you can do that. And it's kind of pretty good too. Like back when it first launched, it struggled with my wide angle camera like I've got here. Like check this out. If I add NVIDIA background removal, background is gone entirely. There, there's still some artifacting and stuff, you know, going on down here on the desk. But like, as I turn this off and on, that's, that's pretty good. Like I can move pretty fast. It does a pretty good job. So now all I have to do is crop into my head, stretch myself out a little bit. And just like that, Hi, I'm Steggy from Elgato. Easy peasy. Sorry, Steggy, I take it back. Update number three, Apple Silicon Direct Support, which is for Mac users out there, I'm so excited about this. In fact, I was so excited that I installed it on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Super excited to see how it would work. It ran perfectly fine. However, I didn't notice a performance boost. At least not yet. In both instances, whether it was X264 or the hardware encoder, I noticed the CPU usage was about the same and the quality was about the same. So I'm hoping this is just like a foundation laid so that they can build upon it later and things are able to be more optimized in the future. But just know that that's not a huge game changer just yet. Update number four, little quality of life update. If you use the pop out chat and you're a YouTube streamer like myself, you can now send messages to your YouTube chat directly in OBS. Before you couldn't do that. It was weird and it was small, but I would always have chat open on both monitors because I liked looking at one chat over here, but I had to type in this chat over here. I can now consolidate that. I can just have it. I can have the one chat open. And to me, that's a win and I'm happy about it. Number five is gonna make a lot of people happy. You can now save your UVC webcam settings directly in OBS. So some of you might still have webcams where every time you shut it down and open it, your webcam settings reset and you have to adjust your colors and your brightness and your contrast and all the things. You don't have to do that anymore. You can save the settings inside OBS. Thank goodness, why did that take so long? Why, why are we still here resetting webcam settings every time? I don't know. I don't know if that's a fault with the webcam manufacturers or if it's a fault with OBS. Maybe it's a fault of both, but let's just be happy that it's here. And then update number six, really big quality of life update, especially for those who are pixel perfect when it comes to setting up your overlays. It now gives you more refined borders and measurements when you're adjusting your sources on your canvas. So even just while setting up this video, like remember earlier when I showed the NVIDIA broadcast software and I was split screened, that was a perfect cut in half split screen because I could actually see how many pixels from the edge there were. It's phenomenal. It's going to make setting up my cameras and my overlays and my alerts so much easier, so thank you for that. I remember when they first released Streamlabs OBS and that was a part of it and I was like, oh, this is kind of nice. This feels like a little bit more modern software and it took, it took all the way until now for OBS to include it, but I'm happy it's here. But those are my top six features of OBS version 28 that are exciting to me. Did I miss one? I bet a lot of people are gonna be excited about, uh, what's that one? HDR content on YouTube. Is that the big one for you? I bet that's gonna be the one that people complain about that I didn't talk about the most. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite feature was. Whether it was in my list, not in my list, I'd love to hear it. And if you're still watching and haven't hit the like button yet, what are you doing? You obviously like the video. You hear this far, hit the button. <laughs> Thank you. And as always, happy streaming.